All right, our Frank Talk continues here on your view with me on Kopuse JJ Taban. We're coming to you live from Linden in Johannesburg on this Africa Wednesday. And of course, after this interview, because our Africa Roundtable uh, carries on with uh, Victor Komoeswana as well as Sipo Advocate Sipo Mantula. We'll be looking at issues uh, like Zimbabwe, like Angola. And of course, uh, we're throwing forward also to the AU meeting next week uh, where uh, South Africa will be taking over the chairman's chairpersonship of the African Union. So do stay tuned for that conversation uh, after the 11 o'clock news. Uh, we're going to go to the lines uh, in, in Lim, Limpopo. Sirubani, good evening. Good evening, JJ, and good evening to Mr. Chamisa. Good evening to you. Go for it. Mm. I've got two issues, JJ. Yes. Uh, the first issue I just want to ask Chamisa is whether is he hoping for a smooth transition of power if they win the next election. That's number one. Number two, I just want to ask him, can you please mobilize Zimbabwean to live in South Africa to go and vote during elections in Zimbabwe? Or at least initiate ways for them to wait to vote here in South Africa because Zimbabweans, it needs Zimbabweans to save themselves away from, from themselves. Zimbabwe, the old Zimbabweans are the people who can save Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe. If the Zimbabweans are not participating in what is happening in Zimbabwe and they are comfortable here, whereas they are not doing anything to make sure that their country is on the right track. They are still going to complain up until Jesus Christ comes. Now he is in South Africa, he got that opportunity to be here. He must at least mobilize people on the ground to encourage them to go and vote and fix things which are happening in Zimbabwe. Good right. evening to you, JJ. Evening to you, my brother. Uh, the, the issue is, again, the issue of diaspora. Is it possible that... Uh, you know, because of the failure, right, to overturn that unconstitutional legislation, the, the Electoral Act, mm. that this suggestion is the, is the most practical now, that when the election comes, you then mobilize uh, uh, people in the diaspora to go back home just to vote? Well, it's, it's quite possible. These are some of the issues to be dealt with in the context of the amendment to the Electoral Act to just give way and pave way for the participation of Zimbabweans in the, um, yeah. um, uh, in the diaspora. You believe it's a, it's, a, it's a project deliberately sabotaged by ZANU-PF because uh, they know that those who are in the diaspora are probably angry with them? I've already said that they've stalled this process in Parliament and it has been a big issue. The reason why we do are not... Are the prospects of it changing though under the ZANU-PF dominated government? Well, there are prospects because we are pushing for it. And people in the diaspora are also pushing for it. And they have the latitude to use their muscle power to push for it. All right. Agenda 2020. Give yes. me the last three. Okay. Let me just summarize so that yeah. we, we are able to move with speed. The first issue, like I said, is the people's government. Yeah. The second one is life lose. The third yeah. one is the fight against corruption. Mm. Corruption is a big issue uh, in Zimbabwe. Yeah. And there's been lip service to the issue of corruption. I see you, you, you established an integrity, some kind of integrity commission. Was that for the MDC or, yes. or, or, or broad? No, it is just we have the jurisdiction of our MDC deployees yeah. in government, so we could not do it for... I see, it's for, it's for deployees in government. It's our deployees in government because we have them in parliament, we have them in the local And it's, it's functioning. It's, it's not functioning and, you know, the good thing is that uh, it's a, an accountable, transparent process. If you have complaints, you just go to approach them and things are then uh, reported accordingly, reports made, okay. and we deal with the culprits. So the, so the fight against corruption, what else? Because oh, that one is response only to MDC. What are your other plans should you come to power in Zimbabwe to fight corruption? Because it seems like it's a, it's a habit. It's become a way of doing business in the continent. Eh? Well, the fish rots from the head. It mm. starts with the leader. If the leader is corrupt, it, it, it affects the Are you saying Nangonga is corrupt? Uh, I said the head. He's the head let's, of Zimbabwe. Let's examine the head. Tell me more. The fish rots from the head. Is Nangonga corrupt? Can you accuse him frontally to say, say you are corrupt? We are facing a situation where I've said the fish rots from the head. And JJ, you know what I mean? Is there political tolerance in Zimbabwe? Are you able to stand and actually call things by their names in the political circles or you'll be in charge of treason? 
of course you always get uh, to be charged but uh, we continue to maintain our rights and our freedom of expression what happened there was a, a big party that was formed or a movement i don't remember what it's called now but the, the, the leaders you know ended up in prison and and, and lawyers um, Zimbabwe marched and did the class action this of, flag of, movement yeah uh, is civil society engaged in Zimbabwe or have they given up? Well, they've not given up. They're trying their best, but the democratic space is limited. There is what I call authoritarian consolidation by mm -hmm. Mr. Munangagwa, uh, trying to reverse the gains of democracy, particularly through the kidnappings we have seen, the violence we have seen in the countryside. Uh, they've out come up with what are called uh, the Mashurugi gang, yeah. who are basically a machete wielding gangs, mm. who go around, you know, terrorizing and violating people's uh, This sounds rights. like stuff from the 60s, man. But that's what it is. It's archaic, Stone Age tactics. But that's what is happening in Zimbabwe. What are you going to do if you come to power on the economy? We talked a little bit up before the break about your uh, rather uh, interesting currency, uh, I don't know if you call it currency fluctuations, I, try, I just say currency inconsistencies. Well, the most important thing uh, to deal with uh, is trust and confidence. Yeah. We have to fix confidence, trust. During the inclusive government, when MDC was involved, yeah. we fixed most of the problems. We can fix Zimbabwe in a short space of time. We must get productivity and production right. We must get the rule of law right. We must restore and secure proper rights. Ease of doing business must be enhanced. The security of investment must be assured. We must make sure that people have recourse when they are violated in any way or any manner. We have to make sure that there's consistency of policies, not yeah. this habit of indicating left and turning right. Mm -hmm. You don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. You just wake up, you are told that there is a U.S. dollar one is to one with the new currency we have introduced. The next day you are told, no, it's, they are no longer one is to one. The rate is now one is to hundred. You can't plan under those circumstances. Yeah, it's bad. Eh? It's almost like a casino it's... economy. And you don't know there's too much speculation, conjecture. You yeah. don't run an economy on the basis of uncertainty. And those are the issues that we need to sort out so that we are able to move forward. Strong institutions... Yeah. I was about to ask that, are there strong enough institutions in Zimbabwe who can become a bulwark almost against abuse of power that could intervene in certain aspects? For example, here at the Central Bank, there's a big issue about you know, whether the Reserve Bank must have a sway in certain things or its mandate must change, etc. I know the Central Bank in Zimbabwe, does it hold sway? Would it have been put under political pressure to, to make you know, an unworkable issue of a currency I mean, if you, you, all the things you have mentioned uh, you know if they are not in place you can change currency as many times as you like it means nothing well our institutions are not as strong the biggest challenge on the african continent has been to build strong men as opposed to strong institutions and that is the tragedy of zimbabwe we've had a strong men and not strong institutions we continue to have a strong man wanting to entrench himself against the idea of building strong institutions yeah. within the context of the courts, uh, yeah. an independent reserve bank. You don't have, it's not independent? Of course, it, it does not operate in an independent fashion. And those are the issues you, we need to would, do. You, would you describe the Zimbabwean situation as a constitutional crisis? It's not a constitutional crisis per se, but I would say uh, it's fundamentally a crisis that is emanating from governance. It's a governance crisis. In, in, in rounding off, the last, the last element of, of your, your, your 2020, and then what is your message to Zimbabweans now? The fight in defense of the constitution and constitutionalism. Mr. Munangago wants to introduce 27 amendments. We have to resist those amendments because they're all, all about consolidation of his own power. Mm. One of them is to increase the age of the chief justice. Which well, is well, at, at the point he's sitting where and you want to get to what? Well, we don't understand why this is being changed because now there's also the attempt to remove the Judicial Services Commission mm. in terms of its oversight role on the appointment of judges. 
and senior judges in the uh, superior courts. Yeah. Uh, we are seeing also the attempt to try and uh, delink the issue of delimitation and the census so that rigging is done, gerrymandering is done outside any standard measure of a scientific uh, or a scientific alert certain um, uh, 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 number of figures or number of voters. So all those changes do not uh, help Zimbabweans, but they militate against what the people voted for and what the people want to see in terms of the constitution that they voted for. So we are going to defend that in 2020 as part of our agenda. Well, we hope uh, that all that we are planning will come to pass. We will, uh, uh, you know, if you keep your word, come and visit Zimbabwe to come and, you know, hear for ourselves on the ground. Indeed. You know, about dialogue amongst Zimbabweans about yeah. how to resolve the, the, the issues. That's right. Uh, so, so we wish you well and hope that, uh, you know, we can have a, a, a further conversation with you. So your message to Zimbabwe is in South Africa now. Get ready. Oh, I let you go. Get ready, Zimbabwe. Young Zimbabweans, be involved. Find a way of being part of this final journey. It has been a long period and a long journey fighting for democracy. We are almost getting there. The darkest hour is usually there before dawn. Those who think yeah. that we are not doing much, we are doing a lot. But you see, when you are dealing with a situation such as ours, yeah. at times you don't want to use a megaphone. Uh, tactics. Yeah. You know, revolutionaries should not announce a timetable. No revolution is a timetable. Yeah. And we need to make sure that we are ready yeah. to make sure we return our Nangawa. What's your relationship with Mr. Nangawa as, as, as a leader of the opposition? Well, Does he take your calls? I relate with him as the leader of the opposition. Does he take your calls? He is the leader of the opposition because he is the one who is opposing the will of the people. <laughs> I've never tried to call him. Why? Don't you think that at that very top Zimbabweans, you yourself said you can't put pressure under President Mbeki? He's hardly, he's hardly in the country, so he's not available uh, if you want to talk to him. If he's Don't you think that's part of the trouble, that uh, you have not created, uh, in a sense, channels, uh, informal uh, though they may be, to try and find each other uh, as, as leaders at the very top of Zimbabwe's a political strata? It's very difficult to find a person who, is not, uh, who cannot be found. It's very difficult to love somebody who is not lovable. <laughs> so you've not called him? You've not tried to call him since he, he rigged the elections? The number is always busy. You don't have his number? I've tried him. He's not available. <laughs> Mr. Nachamisa, all the best, man. Thank, Thank you, you so much, and I appreciate your time. Thank tonight. you. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Nelson Chamiza there of the MDC in Zimbabwe. The wheels seem to be coming off, you know, and uh, you know, it looks like the Reserve Bank there has resorted to just printing money, basically. I mean, and it's not an exaggeration that Zimbabweans are in a crisis. They are queuing for everything, from steak to fuel to bread, you name it. And Nelson Chamiza is saying, if you are Zimbabweans you are out there, you've got to stand up and come and be part of rebuilding uh, what used to be the basket, the food basket of Africa. Let's take a break now.